T.J. Bell 81 car is Jason Bowles. The 70 is Johanna Long, 19 years old. 19 years old. Yeah, but she's pretty good. I, I talked to her down the garage area and uh, talking about her experience that she's had. She's raced a lot of late models and. You know, the biggest thing on her resume is winning the Snowball Derby against some of the very best short track racers in the country. And uh, so we talked about that a little bit and then talked about, you know, she's run some truck series races and got some experience there, but she's really looking forward to getting in this series of racing car. That's a great opportunity. As we said at the top of the show, you know, the opportunity is out there. You know, obviously getting with the right team and having the funding uh, makes a big difference, just as Ryan Truex was talking about getting that opportunity to be in top notch equipment. He has proven, by the way, that he can race with these guys. And I, But I did have to kind of chuckle to myself and listen to him talk about it, it was almost a desperate sound and he's 19 years old. I, I, I think back and you know, all I can compare it to is my career. I didn't drive a race car the first time until I was 20 years old. So they're, they're already feeling like that they're behind at 19 by not being able to be it. That's just uh, the way the sport is this day and time. They're on a fast pace. 21 races planned for 19-year-old Johanna Long in that uh, 70 car for ML Motorsports this season in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. We were following uh, Johanna Long a little while ago on the track, and they were spread out, this group that she was in. They were trying to get together and learn some of this tandem racing. Yeah, they've been in a little group trying to run together, and it was not working. I mean, they were running in the 50, mid-50 second bracket, and that is not going to get it done. So you see them trying to experiment, and it's, uh, they got away with it, but it, yeah. didn't, it wasn't pretty. That's Jason Bowles in the 81 car, and uh, he had a hard time. 19-year-old Johanna Long from Pensacola got a free pass earlier in the race to get back on the lead lap. She's in the hunt for a good finish in her Daytona debut in the Nationwide Series. How about the leader? I see her team power other than Daytona a couple years ago, so for, uh, to go out and run like we are, it uh, shows what these guys do for us. Good to see you back. He's got an ARCA Series win here, and he's looking for one in the Nationwide Series tonight. I tell them the next time they didn't have any better information than that, just not to talk to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, that's got to get you going. Here's Johanna Long, uh, ninth fastest on her first lap. That's lap. a nice lap. Yeah. Does have some experience at this racetrack in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Looking to make her nationwide series debut here. A little bit out of the groove there on that second lap. and see the speed falling off. Lap number one will be ninth overall with now seven cars to go. Well, Casey Kane was on the top of the board for a couple of minutes anyway, Vince. Currently second after the run. Really taught me a lot of things about this track that I really didn't realize before. And I ran better here last year, two top five finishes, qualified better the fall race. I think we qualified for So we really got a good one main financial car here tonight. We just want to try to put the whole package together. All right, trying to get that first win here at the home track. Maybe he might be a little hard on himself. I remember a race where he was leading on the white flag coming off turn two. Got Somebody kind of took it away yeah, from him. A little nudge in the left rear corner. Made for a great finish. Not for Elliott necessarily, but I believe that was Carl Edwards. Yeah, I think Carl got a good finish. Got the win. Yes, he did. Joanna Long, fourth fastest at the moment, 22.229. Johanna Long, we've talked a lot about her this year and making her sixth start and first time here at Talladega. I feel like I've learned my, gained my respect a little bit at Daytona. I've, I raced really hard at Daytona and I feel like I've made a couple of friends. So I got seven laps of practice today so far. The, we have a hole in the wheel cooler. So we're trying to get that fixed to get me back out on track to try to get this drafting down pat. So tell me the differences, being that you ran so well at Daytona, how different do you feel here? Um, it's just all getting the experience, you know, the two-car draft. I, I didn't feel like I had a lot of experience pushing someone, but I feel like I've learned a lot from Daytona that I can bring in for tomorrow, 
for tomorrow's race. So hopefully we get back on track so I can get a little bit more experience. And you guys have some momentum. You had a good run last week, finished 20th ahead of Travis Pastrana, much to his chagrin. He wanted to beat the girls. But how much does that help you and this team? I know you guys aren't going to every race, so anything helps. It does. You know, me and the team, are we're really progressing each and every weekend. And it's showing, you know, coming into a new team, they don't really know what I want in a race car. And it's my sixth, um, sixth start in a nationwide, so it's very hard, you know, but I, I feel like we've come a long ways, and I feel like we're definitely showing some progression. Not that we're comparing women against women, but when you look at her stats, she's only run five out of the seven races, and her average has been better than Danica so far. Alan? Yeah, 19 years old is Johanna Long. We've seen her in NASCAR's Camping World Truck Series uh, the last year and change, and she's certainly made a name for herself uh, on the short tracks of Florida and South Alabama as well. That snowball, snowball Derby is a big, big deal, short track race, and she's holding the trophy. When I saw her, she had won that race. I, I, that's when I knew she was for real, and she's got such a great attitude. Uh, she goes about this in a learning phase, and she's out there gaining a ton of respect. Like she said at Daytona, I think she, she gained respect there, but I think she's actually gained respect since then, too. Yeah, and she's done all of this, too, with a team that they work extremely hard, but they are underfunded and probably understaffed in comparison to a lot that they're racing against. So she has a tremendous amount of talent and been very impressed with what she's done so far. breaker at the end of the year so every point is critical let's talk about some other folks uh, worthy of note during the running of this race Johanna Long having a solid run in the 70 car lead lap and in 13th spot Shannon and Alan she started the race 14th so it was a great qualifying effort for the 20 year old as well she has been pretty happy with the car the entire race she says three and four are a little bit of a struggle but she feels like she's really making up for that lost speed in one and two slight adjustments on that car all race long doing a nice job i'm really impressed by joanna long i mean she's a good little race car driver she won one of the world's biggest short track races the snowball derby in Pensacola, florida of you in Milwaukee. Welcome to the Irish Hills of Michigan and the NASCAR Nationwide Series race here on ABC. Ryan Hunter Ray winning the IZOD IndyCar Series race at the Milwaukee Mile today. Congratulations to him. Here in Michigan, you see we have 46. It's still losing. Whoa, is he going to go get loose there? Now he's sliding up in front of John Along. Oh, man, look at that 22 Keselowski get, get loose. Right? That's where she got loose last time. championship leader Elliot Sadler and you want somebody to help push you to the win tonight or to push to a win and get maybe a second place finish or push clear of the traffic off turn four and have a chance to slingshot him at the line wouldn't you want the guy that's won two of the last three of these plate races and the guy that's won four of the last five nationwide races he's entered to say hey want to be my drafting guy tonight yeah I can overlook a lot for that yeah. yeah when that guy sends you a text and said you know I don't have a drafting partner would you be interested yeah, it doesn't take you. Well, I think it took Elliot a little while just because he w didn't want him to think that everything was just A-OK. -okay. <laughs> but uh, it didn't take him too long to get back to Joey and say, yeah, we, I think we can do that. And you're right, Alan. Man, this one, two of the three and and uh, has a fast race car. How about Johanna Long right yeah, there? Nice. That's the third. Third fastest. 176.239 miles an hour for the 20-year-old from Florida. 
She finished 21st back here in February. Yep. With Johanna Long, who is uh, currently fourth, will make her second start in the Nationwide Series here at Daytona. So what will be different tonight, Johanna, over your first start here in February? I have a lot more experience on these racetracks for sure. I feel really comfortable racing in the packs and um, drafting now. So I feel like we have a really fast race car, especially at which part here at Chevrolet. I feel like it's really good. The guy's been working extremely hard back at the shop, and I'm really proud of the guys at MM Motorsports. I'm really proud to be driving for him. Uh, do you have a buddy out there when you need one uh, to go tandem drafting with? Well, I don't have a teammate. You know, that's that's our biggest um, downfall right now. But hopefully, you know, I've gained a lot of experience. And hopefully, when it gets, comes time to I hopefully someone will want to work with me. Yeah, hopefully, she's one of those rookies that the veterans will say, yeah, I know she can do it. I'm going to race with her. Fourth on the board right now is Johanna as Joni Machek. Another one. Allgaier, 31. Hornish, 12. Remember Kyle Busch in that 54, not on the lead lap. Joanna Long, red, white, and blue 70 in the mix. 81 car, Jason Bowles, 41, Timmy Hill, 14, Eric McClure. They're all on the lead lap. Up all the time on the track because you don't have enough tires. They do give the rookies that extra set, so it keeps them on the track, gets them more laps, more opportunity to learn. But I've been on both sides of that, Alan, just like you're talking about. Yeah. Spending all the money as an owner, it's not fun. And, and you want NASCAR to protect you or protect us from ourselves, yeah. there, like you said. Yeah. But as a crew chief or a driver or a rookie driver, you want that track time. You want to be out there. But um, so I, I kind of know what it feels like to be on, on each side of that issue. One of the drivers that's a classic case of that, Johanna Long in that 70. Rookie driver, right? Team that's not one of the top funded teams on the circuit. And Vince, they're, uh, they're trying to find their way around here as she looks to make her first nationwide series start at this track. Well, and this is an important race for this team, Alan, because this is a close race to their home shop, which is in Warsaw, Indiana, northern Indiana. Of course, next week at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway will be big for them as well. But they're running a new car, brand new RCR chassis here this weekend. So they thought they would be starting slow to just kind of figure things out, make sure they had everything in place and she was comfortable with the car. And then they would ramp it up as the practice rolled on. So not very fast right now, but really as expected as they began their practice session. She's coming off of her best finish at 12 at Daytona the last time she was in the car. So she's got a little confidence coming in. Opening practice for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And again, that's going to be a fourth out of now 17. New fast time. Johanna Long, top of the board. Yeah, and a really fast lap. Yeah, one of the same fast, fast lap of the weekend so far. One of 14 drivers making their first start here at Chicago Land. Picking it up from the second one, too. Been here before. She ran a truck race in uh, 2010, so she's got some experience on this track. Well, they were said they were going at things a little slow yesterday in practice. A new race car chassis from Richard Childress's operation picked it up, put it to good use. 173.617 mile an hour average speed on that lap for Johanna Long, new very leader nice, in qualifying. Very nice. Taylor Malsum next on the track. We check on pit road defense. Brad Sweet, he's at eight miles an hour. He trails Johanna Long, climbing out of her car after setting fast time so far here at Chicagoland. Johanna Long, number one spot on the board right now, Mike. And she's had a big smile on her face since she's gotten out of the car, Alan, rightly so. Fast time so far. Tell me about your qualifying effort. It's, it's been it's been crazy. You know, we unloaded yesterday. We were extremely far off. You know, this is a new car for us, and we're trying to get all the bugs out of it. But these guys never give up. You know, the ML Motorsports guys never give up. And we we made a big, big progression from yesterday, and I'm really happy to be a part of this and the Sport Travel Motor Coach Chevrolet. You've never run a nationwide race here at Chicago Land Speedway. I know you have run in the Truck Series here a couple of years ago. How do you see the challenge this weekend? It's just getting the experience and learning these cars around this racetrack. You know, it was a struggle trying to find the um, this type of race car that I wanted and what I was asking for yesterday. But I feel I feel a lot comfortable since the sun's back down and hopefully it stays like this because I feel like we'll have a pretty good race car for the day. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you so much. Very happy Johanna Long, Alan. Top of the board right now, Mike. After 23 have run, now make it 24, Joni.
And then in 15th spot, another lady that we need to tip our hat to, Johanna Long. Winner of the Snowball Derby in 2010. Anybody associated with short track racing knows how prestigious that is. And the last car on the lead lap is Joe Nemechek. He is in jeopardy, though, of going lap. And in sixth place, Johanna Long in the 70. She goes through your screen right there. She is doing well tonight. Hacks on the wheel there. Speaking of Johanna, we're checking a tweet that was sent in by Jeff Burton. Here it is. Deserves a shot in a top 10 car. No disrespect to her current team. They just don't have the funding that the big teams have. Vince, you've got more? Well, they run RCR chassis. They've got ECR engines, but they have such a small team. As I mentioned pre-race, seven employees on this team. They fly four people in to pit the car, and that's where they struggle at times during the season. Right now, she just needs help off the corner, but she's trying to ride right there so she doesn't burn off that right rear tire. She knows how valuable that's going to be later in the run, Marty. Right. If you watch where she's running, she's running right behind Denny Hamlin. And she's lost no more than a quarter of a second to him. I think that's a pretty good gauge of how she's doing. Yeah, actually, the last couple of laps, she's closed in on Denny Hamlin, so she's running faster. So she's not needing much help. But just talking about that funding and stuff, yeah, they might have the chassis and the engines, but there's so much more to this now with, with all the engineering that goes into it. She does a really, really good job. I mean, this young lady won the Snowball Derby. If you go down and beat the best short track racers that there are at that racetrack, it shows how much talent you have. A 20 year old from Pensacola, Florida, right now, dazzling all of us, running in sixth position. Shannon, that 54 car, as we see now, Johanna Long getting by Denny Hamlin, driving her way to the front. I believe that puts her in fifth. The 54 of Kurt Busch moving forward did not get the good qualifying run, but Mike Beam told me that was okay because the car was tight and this track loose. There's your top five here at our race at Richmond, presented by KM. We've knocked down 30 of the 250 laps. Guys, Denny Hamlin really struggling with his race car. They're going to fix it on this pit stop. He says he's an eight on a 10 scale loose. Eight loose on a one to 10 scale. And he also didn't appreciate when Joanna Long went by him earlier in the race. Let me know. I'll get the shit out of her way. This is going to drive me to nationwide retirement. Tell you what, he might not have liked it, but the 70 of Joanna Long has been pretty stout here in the early going. Yes, she has. She has uh, moved up to the fifth position right now. Pits are now open, so. Well, the great night that Johanna Long ended with that uh, second caution, and Dave has caught up with her. Yeah, crew working on the car right now. Not sure if you're going to get back out or not. Can you sum up the early part of your night and then tell us what happened? Well, we had a really good car. I was really pleased how everything was working. ML Motorsports with this King Park Chevrolet. It was, it was on a rail at the beginning of the race. You, you know, we were passing cars. Felt like we were really good. We were just a little too free, and I was burning. I felt like I burned my stuff up a little too much. And, I blew it right front. I really hate it for all these guys, and we had a really good run going. It's just, it just really heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when you run that well, isn't it, guys? Yeah. I, I hate that for her, because her car really was good. I watched a lot of the lap times when she was back in, in traffic. Her lap times were solid. You know, the pit crew gave up a few spots, and it, it puts you back there, and you have to use up so much car trying to get back to the front. Yeah, that's the key. That we're going to be talking to next. It is the driver of the number 70, Johanna Long. That's right. She had a great run going last week at Richmond. We'll get her thoughts on today's event when we return to Chicagoland. <music> Johanna Long is our in-race reporter, and her numbers... So far in that number 70 car, 16 starts with seven top 20 finishes. His best, he ran 12th at Daytona back in July and had that great run going last week at Richmond. Let's talk to her, DJ. 
Johanna Long, Dale Jarrett, ESPN. Do you have a copy? Yes, sir. I got you. Well, thanks for talking with us today, and after another solid qualifying effort here today, uh, starting 17th, I know you're excited about this race, but uh, you have a great short track resume, and last weekend at Richmond, you sure showed that talent, but how difficult has it been to learn these cars at much higher speeds on these mile-and-a-half tracks? Well, you know, it's really different. You know, you're just keeping your momentum up into the corners and staying in the gas as much as you can. Came from a short track background, but when I come to these, it's a little out of my comfort zone, but I feel really good about today. We just got to work on the car, get a little bit better for me. Jenna, our next question comes from our mailbag in Georgia and Indianapolis, Indiana asks, how far do you think your team has gone since the beginning of the year, and have you met your goals so far this season? You know, it's definitely been a work in progress. So these guys in MMR Sports never give up, and we're doing the best. We're doing really good this year. We just got to keep it going and hope for another decent run today. Well, thanks for talking with us. You have a great day out on the track. We'll talk to you later on. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief. Hey, Mark Gutekunst, Andy Petrie, you have us? Yeah, I got you. Hey, Mark, great job uh, last week with a great run, and you guys have really made a lot of headway this year with that team. What do you have to do to make that next step to take those kind of runs and turn them into top five finishes? Oh, everything has to be right when you come play, play with these guys here. It's just working out every fine detail on every single thing from uh, chassis to bodies to picker to everything. Just keep working. Well, Mark, what do you think today uh, as far as strategy goes? you think it could come down to a, a strategy play and maybe even a fuel mileage race at the end? Yeah, definitely. We get long green flag runs here. Good news is the weather came back to our spring race, so we can go off of those notes. So it, it should be just take it as it comes here. Okay, Mark, I hope you're on the right side of the strategy, and good luck today. Thanks for talking to us. Yep, thanks. And our over-the-wall man today is Jeremy Marsh. He's the rear tire carrier for that number 70 car. There he is. And Jeremy, we, we've doc documented about how your team, you know, is not as well-funded. You actually have uh, sort of old-school racing because you're carrying multiple jobs as well as many others. Give us an idea about your work week. <laughs> That's right, Barney. Besides uh, showing up here in an open trailer, um, I work on the car all week at the shop, prepare it for the race, tune on it during, uh, during the practice sessions, get it ready to qualify, and... We got a decent qualifying start today, and now we got to focus on fast pit stops and get Joanna out there in the lead. All right, you be safe down there. Thank you. Take care. Have a great day. All right, we've also got our dual path. Well, a quick note, Joanna Long had just been put a lap down. She's going to be the beneficiary of this yellow as she will get back on the lead lap. And we're getting ready to gear up for pit stops here. And so we have completed 39 of our 200 laps. And they're saying the pit road is still closed. So they'll have to make another full lap around this mile and a half oval here. We mentioned Johanna Long is going to get the free pass. Dave Burns, you have more? She's had her hands full today, Marty. Free through the center and off the corner was the original problem. But then later in the run, she said, this car is so tight coming off the corner, it's hard to turn. I have to saw at the wheel to get it to work for me. So they'll have uh, to make a number of adjustments for her on this pit stop. See Joanne. Pops up the visor just a brief moment. Hopefully pit road will be open this next time by. And we are getting word from NASCAR that it will. And during that uh, round of pit stops, our over-the-wall man, Jeremy Marsh, we talked about the fact he has multiple responsibilities on race day. He is the rear tire carrier. Okay, here we go. Four tires, a little bit of track bar. Oh. And we mentioned that Johanna was the beneficiary of the free pass she gets back on the lead lap that means we have a total of 22 cars on the lead lap right now yes yeah, you told me yesterday after practice one set of tires her race car was loose the other set of tires they put on made the car really tight in the center she wasn't exactly sure which car she might have when this race started today so hopefully that track bar adjustment will be good for her. okay we mentioned the fact johanna long has just gone a lap now she's running in 22nd position uh, here's her radio guys
can tell she's really struggling with that thing and they're trying to make adjustments to make it better and when they're making those adjustments it's not affecting the car where she needs it and i think that's really good impu input that she's given the team they really need to, to make an adjustment though that's fifth place elliot sadler just going by johanna and that number 70. And right now, everybody is chasing Austin Dillon. He has opened up a two. person we haven't checked in with uh, today has just cracked into the top ten. And I want to give a shout-out to Johanna Long. Johanna has just gotten around Ryan Scott. She's running on the lead lap. There's only 11 cars on the lead lap. And she is in tenth. Every time I see her run, she does something that impresses me, something that sticks with me. And a mile-and-a-half tracks have been her weakness. She's dedicated herself to getting better at this type of track, and she needs to because it's the meat of the schedule, and boy, she's doing it today. This team uh, faced in nearby Warsaw, Indiana, and so this is almost like a home game for her. And she tested earlier this week in Nashville with Austin Dillon and the three team, and they were working specifically on the mile-and-a-half program. It looks like they did some good work. Nothing motivates you more than to have another driver get in your car and go faster, and that's what I heard happened. How do I know that? Mark Martin, over the years, has gotten in drivers' cars and hurt their feelings. Okay. Johanna Long is in. So, and guys, Johanna Long said on Friday this is the best car she's had in a long, long time. And she's told they are killing them in the center. She's really fast in the center of the turn. It'll be a four-tire stop for the 70 car. Shannon. Johanna Long in... 12th and James Busher in 13th. That's right, Johanna having a very strong run today in that number 70 ride. I just, I really enjoy watching her because I can see the progress. It seems like race to race. You can see the battle right in front of her. Ryan. Up in turn number four is, there's a car and it's, it's Johanna Long. So a tough break for Johanna. Right front blue, hard. She was running 12th. Yeah, there. You okay? Yeah, I'm all right, he'll be there to you in just a second here. Take a breath. So a lot of action happening. So let's go back first because uh, this is huge. And there's what's left of Johanna Long's car. And from Austin Dillon's onboard, we'll give an idea of what happened. Yeah, see that tire just let go. Get down into the corner, hard hit, as she said. Tough break for Johanna. She had finished 12th back at Kentucky, her best run on a mile and a half, and she had a great run going today, but the end result, right there on the hook. Action has settled down at least for the moment. Johanna Long has been released from the infield care center. Let's talk to her, Jamie. Well, she is okay. She qualified ninth and was having a pretty good day. Was there any indication there? Do you think you ran over any debris? I don't know what happened. You know, we ran really good at the start of the race. We got a little bit of that, that pit stop there, the put us back there. We ran hard, you know, all the guys in the Ford Travel Motor Coach Chevrolet really worked hard all day long. Oh, it all to them. I don't know if something broke or just the right front, but we'll just go to work, try to get it better and get ready for Texas. All right, that will be the next time we'll see her, Marty. And every time we've seen her lately, she has been making improvements and doing a good job at it. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. You know, we're mixing it up a little bit this year. The Cup Series race during the day tomorrow. The Nationwide Series race tonight under the lights. Kyle Busch will lead the field to green. But it was also a solid qualifying effort for Johanna Long and her small team. Long will start 21st. We do say this a lot. The Nationwide Series, it's where the future of this sport is born and developed. It's where names like Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Austin Dillon are made. So Johanna Long is trying to make a name for herself, too. And for Johanna, this racing thing is one day at a time and one race at a time. Johanna Long having a very strong run today. 20-year-old from Pensacola, Florida, right now, dazzling all of us. I've always watched my dad race, so it was cool to be like my dad and do something like he was doing. He started racing dirt track cars and asphalt stuff at Pensacola. When I turned five years old, I was like, Dad, let's go to a go-kart race. I want to race. It took my dad a long time for him to say, OK, I want you to race. He put me in softball, valet, everything he could um, put me in. Finally, when I was eight years old, he let me try it out, and it's stuck ever since. I knew when Johanna was in go-karts, I mean, he knew, I knew she had a gift. I raced go-karts for four years, and then I moved up to a legend car. 
when I turned 13 years old, we went straight head force to late models. And I won races, I won a championship. She makes history here tonight. Joe Headlong wins. And Johanna is on that track. Johanna's in her heaven. I was racing with my dad for her first couple of years, and that was cool. Joe Headlong to the inside of Casey Smith. Great move. It. Here in 2010, I raced the biggest race of my career. It's called the Snowball Derby. Landon Castle to the lead, long the second place. I was leading when we took the white flag, and, uh, and Johanna spun me out. Can she get around Castle? She puts a bumper, she turns him. It was coming the last laps of the Snowball Derby, and I would have done anything to win, and I won it. Just, I guess it's something that you never thought was going to happen. Her dad had tried for so many years. You know, it was a big deal. It was special for everybody. After I won the Snowball Derby, we got a truck team. You know, we went truck racing. Johanna Long makes her career debut tonight. That's oh, our leader right out there. In front of this field, that's the 20 of Johanna Long. Those were the first laps she's ever led. We ran 17 races. I was going to be it. If we can find something where I can take what I was going to spend and pull it to where we can get her a better opportunity in the Nationwide Series, and I was all for it. 19-year-old Johanna Long in her Daytona debut in the Nationwide Series. She's in the hunt for a good finish. Really impressed by Johanna Long. I mean, she's a good little race car driver. I've seen progress from her all year long. Speaking of Johanna, we're checking a tweet by Jeff Burton. Here it is. Deserves a shot in a top 10 card. She's, you know, whenever she goes racing, she runs well. She's got speed. She's been able to qualify fast at some races. Uh, and then, you know, she's been able to go back in her late model car and be very competitive. And those things, to me, means that she can do it. They've had some great runs. I, I remember Richmond. You know, she's running up in the top five with us and, and really aggressive, really smooth, and can keep going and, and pushing as hard as she can. So I think she's gaining a lot of respect doing that. Now Johanna Long getting by Denny Hamlin. I believe that puts her in fifth. Main goal was just gain respect from all the drivers, and I felt like I've done that. Now I'm starting to race hard. My confidence is so much higher than it's been in a very long time. All you ever can ask for is someone to take a chance on you. I don't care who's beside me. I don't care who's behind me or in front of me. It's just all about making your dreams come true and blocking everything else out. Have we had a good enough chance to make a fair judgment about how she's doing and how she's developing in this series? I think we, we've made a, uh, had enough time to see that she's got the ability and the desire uh, to get an opportunity at the next step. Right now, I think the she needs to, her next opportunity needs to be with a more experienced team, a more well-funded team to find out if she can continue on. Yeah, it's all about the dollars. Let's be realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, she has proven that she has the ability, the talent, and I think with this race team, this ML race team, she has gotten the most out of this. She's done the best she can, tremendous amount of seat time. She's ready to take that next step. And no offense to her car owners, uh, Mary Louise Miller and that group, they've done a great job, but she needs an opportunity to step up and get in the big time equipment with great experience around her. I think she's a really talented race Buddy, I'll tell you one thing. When she won that Snowball Derby, she was running the top five throughout the night of that race, but yeah. wins that thing. That proves to me that she can get it done. And I watched her week after week, and we keep talking about it in the studio here about, hey, I'm seeing something good out of her. I'm seeing her run up front a lot. And you're right. She needs a little bit better car right now. But one thing I know about racing and how, what it takes to get you a better car, Money by speed. That's baby. right. That does. What it you've does. said about her this year is we've seen snapshots of greatness. Yes. And the importance of having that good car and that good crew around you could perhaps be illustrated. Of the six car, and Johanna Long is slowing. She was running in the 21st position on the lead lap. I don't know if I'm going to make it, guys. My, I'm in the neutral. Well, sort of cut out on us. Yeah, no tell them. What, don't know what exactly doing with there. What happened with another tough break for Johanna. She does make it to pit road, so there'll be no caution. Make it. You heard him say the shifter yeah, handle. Well, came now off. we know. I mean, uh, evidently the, the shift handle fell off, and she's not able to put it back in gear. I have to go to the garage area and get something in there. So one of the crew members hold up a piece of that shifter. Now, one thing that happens if that butcher. thing falls out, if it, if it comes off, it'll fall down and hit the drive shaft. So again, a tough break for Johanna. Meanwhile, out we've got a moment under this uh, third caution. Let's check in with Vince for an update on the six. 
Well, we talked about how Ricky Stenhouse uh, dropped some spots there prior to that yellow flag, and the, the fact that uh, his race car was so loose, he described it as a six on a 10 scale and getting worse. They made a track bar adjustment, also put the spring rubber back in the left rear that they had taken out on the first stop. So Mike Kelly making some big changes, hoping that he gives his driver, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., something to work with here in this next run. Jamie? Well, unfortunately, we're back here in the garage with Johanna Long, whose night is over. We saw the shifter handle come out. It broke off, but your problems actually started yesterday. Yeah, we, these guys at Motor Sports, they work extremely hard. We had to change the motor yesterday because it popped out of gear. And same instant here, to, and here today, we went into the corner. Um, it just popped out of gear, and the whole sh I looked down, and the whole shifter, shifter handle, was, handle was off. So it was it's just an unfortunate deal. We, we work, work extremely hard, and we've had some good runs this past couple of races. So it stinks. The year's almost over, and we just got to get our momentum back for Homestead. All right, we'll see you in two weeks back at Homestead, Marty. All right, thanks, Jamie. And, and our first look at Johanna Long, and uh, had a chance to talk with Johanna today, and she was telling me she will be back in this ride next year for 21 races. They're still trying to find more money to be able to do uh, more races than that. But uh, certainly has impressed a lot of people, including the three of us up here all season long. Got a lot of potential, and it's good to see that she's back in the series again next year to see what she can improve on on some of the bright spots we've seen this year. Her best finish was back at Kentucky, where she came home 12th. She also finished 12th at the end. Yeah, it's a, a couple of problems right there. Uh, but, but sometimes if you can't get your car down to the corner, you're picking the throttle up too soon, then that's going to start shoving the nose uh, before you can, before you really can get to the exit part of the corner. And that's just not going to allow you to give the throttle all that you need to carry the speed and be as fast. She's still, she's back in 37th right now. But that's good information, and that's just what they'll have to go work on, see if they can make it better for her. Like Elliot Sadler struggled a little bit right there with his car. I know he's got a lot of laps on his tires. This would be a situation where he's just been on this same set of tires the entire time. With 19 laps, oh, there it is, Johanna Long. It's up close on the back stretch. That's why we couldn't see it from our position. We're blocked from that in a tough way for her to end her season. Johanna will be back with this team next year for at least 21 races. Not the way she wanted to end the year. She was 25th, three laps down. And when we saw her earlier in the race, we, we talked about how she was struggling this weekend. Yeah, she was. And good to see her getting out of this car right there. That's a hard hit to the front of this car. Yeah, parts laying everywhere on the back straightaway. From Joey Logano's onboard, we'll be able to get a better look at see what happened to Johanna. You're right, Andy. Keep an eye on the impact. Wow. That's scary wow. lick right there. Oh. You see all those parts flying off the car? Boy, you're right. It's great to see her able to walk away from that one. So hard contact here. Our fifth caution. And now I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. Does the two car come in? Since he said he was having so much trouble, does he? Uh, he doesn't have any more tires. 